Hey guys, this is TMF Style. I'm Jose Zuniga, and for this week's video, we're going to be comparing a $100 watch to a $1,000 watch. Now, this is derived from a recent article that I did on the five best watches under $100. And what I basically summarized in that article, that it doesn't matter what type of lifestyle you have, if you're a classic man, a rugged man, a hipster, an active man, a diver, whatever it is, there is a watch out there for your lifestyle, and you don't have to spend all that much for it. Now to further showcase my point, I want to do a comparison video for you guys and show you what features are in a high-end watch and what features are in a lower-end watch from my own personal collection. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing a low price model, which would be my Armitron Silver Tone Date Date model. And I actually have talked about this brand before. I have a whole video, which I'll have it on the iCard above me on affordable watches and why I like the brand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare it to my higher end vintage Rolex Oyster 6480. Now, to be fair, neither of these watches are exactly 100 or 1,000. The Rolex is a little bit more than 1,000. And the Armantron is not a hundred, it's actually a little bit less at around 65. So, but for title purposes, I just thought it looked cleaner to round it to a hundred and then just times it by 10 and leave it at that. So let's get started with the video. All right guys, so here are the two watches that we're gonna be comparing. On the left, we have the Rolex Oyster, vintage Rolex Oyster. And then on the right, we have my Armantron date, date, silver tone model that I was talking about. I tried to keep it as close as possible and again I, I was trying to use things from my own collection they don't want to buy anything so you know these are two similar watches that I have they're both you know very classic obviously you have you know the two most obvious things is one has a date date one does not and one is a bigger case than another but in essence it's almost the same style of a classic wristwatch so first, we're going to start with the Armitron. And just for a little bit of history behind the Armitron, the Armitron brand actually has been around for over 50 years. It was actually established by a gentleman named Eugene Gluck at around 1956. The cool thing about it is, is that they were one of the first companies to introduce affordable watches to the mass markets. They made it affordable to men. And as you know today, if you've been on Instagram or anything, that's kind of the trend now. You you see a, a lot of new startup companies and trying to do just that, produce quality, affordable watches. Like I said, what I like about this brand is that it's reputable. It, it's a brand that's been around for a while. Most of their production, from my understanding, is made in China. Uh, the movement is Japanese quartz. That's pretty much the best you can get when it comes to quartz and it is the most accurate like I have spoken about before. So a little bit about the specs about this watch that we're gonna be comparing against the first one. So the first thing is the price. This watch is at $65 free shipping on their website. That's the first thing. And one of the major things I would like to compare. The good thing is that most of this brand is pretty popular and you can find it in major retailers. I believe you can find it in Macy's. I know you can find it at JCPenney. I know you can get an Amazon. So you can go to these stores and actually feel the watches themselves. One thing that I can tell you is that I really like the, the weight of it. It doesn't feel empty or kind of hollow like cheaper watches do. And it has a good weight. And as you know, usually weight means quality materials. It doesn't always mean that, but a good weight is sometimes indicative of quality material so it does have a nice weight to it and it doesn't feel very hollow the watch does come with a full grain brown leather strap and like i already mentioned it does have japanese movement the casing itself is stainless steel as you can see in the back and it's pressure rated on the website because I, I wanted to check the exact specs on the website it says 165 feet on the watch itself it says 100 feet nevertheless 100 or 165 i think that should be enough because this is this isn't really your diver watch you're not looking to do you know really deep diving or you shouldn't at least with a classic watch like this this is mostly for you know suit wear and stuff like that and it's good to know that it's waterproof you know and, and it won't get damaged if it does get wet another cool feature about it is that this model does come with a day and a date feature on it and for $65, that's an amazing deal because if you do a lot of higher end watch shopping, usually models with a day date function tend to cost you a lot more than a model without. But for this model, you're getting date date and it's at $65. The cool thing is that if you're a Spanish speaker, which I, I was noticing as I was playing around with it when I first got it, is that 
it actually accommodates Spanish speakers as well. So I don't know if you guys can read. Let me see if I can get this in real close. Let's see. Okay. All right. So you see how it says Monday there? Oh, wait, my bad. Took it out too much. It's one click for the date. All right. So now it says L-U-N, which that in Spanish is lunes or Monday. And then if I go again, it's my bad. See, it says Tuesday. Let's do it one more time. It says M-A-R, which is martes or Tuesday in Spanish. So if you do set it in Spanish, what the cool thing is, it stays in Spanish. Right, and if you set it in English, it stays in English. So that's pretty cool. And of course, it's a cool feature to have if you're a Spanish speaker. The diameter of the case itself is 40 millimeters. I personally, I think I've mentioned this to you guys before, I don't like any watch over 40 millimeters for my wrist. I have pretty small wrist, and pairing a big watch with a small wrist just make you, makes you look like you have even smaller wrist. Furthermore, I only really use big watches on casual occasions. 40 millimeter, 40 millimeters and underneath is my preferred diameter when I'm wearing suits because I want it to be small and low profile that it can easily tuck un underneath a shirt. And I think that's pretty much the goal for a lot of men when wearing classic wristwatches. So that's enough with the Armintron. And now I'm gonna move on to the Rolex, just describe a couple of the history and the specs, and then finally give you my overall opinion. So, I mean, there's, I don't really have to say much about Rolex. Rolex has a very rich history in, in the watchmaking industry. So much so that, I mean, you guys know, if even if you meet somebody that knows absolutely nothing about watches whatsoever, they know what Rolex is and the prestige that Rolex has. Now that's some seriously strong brand recognition. And that's something you're gonna have to pay for. And I'll discuss that a little bit later on. Rolex was established by its founder. His name was Hans Wildroff. And the guy was a visionary, definitely. Because at that time, wrist watches weren't very popular and everybody was basically wearing pocket watches. And at that time, he saw the wristwatch as a precise and functional piece. So when he started his brand at the age of 24, around 1905, all his efforts went into precision. He wanted his Rolex to be precise, and he did it. Basically, five years later, Rolex watch was the first wristwatch in the world to receive the Swiss certificate of chronometric precision. So, needless to say, the watch itself, the brand behind it, the craftsmanship, the years of experience, and the prestige are definitely ingrained in the Rolex brand. So now I want to discuss some of the specs. This is a manual watch, at least this model is, and it's not an automatic, which means it won't charge with your movement. You have to manually wind it. That's the one thing. This casing has a 34 millimeter diameter, which is pretty small, but I find it favorable, like I mentioned, under 40 and underneath is favorable for me because I have small wrists and I like it when I'm wearing suits. The original band to the Rolex is a metal link steel band. I however swapped it for an after aftermarket leather so there's not the, the the band itself is not rolex it's just a timepiece because i really am not a, a a metal link fan i like leather better the glass itself is plexiglass so it's not sapphire crystal or anything high-end like that and then finally the casing is made out of steel so basically the conclusion which watch is better like i mentioned you can't take away from rolex's quality and precision and its rich history. It has a lot of brand recognition and prestige. And keep in mind, these are intangible assets that basically jack up the price 10 to 20 times more and absolutely do nothing for the wear. So in other words, there is no functionality in those intangible assets other than a good ego boost, like saying, yeah, I have a Rolex. But those intangible assets really aren't functional for the wear. So yes, you do have the quality, you have the precision, you have the craftsmanship, but you got to keep in mind that Rolex does also price in there the brand recognition and the prestige. On the other hand, you have Armintron. You have 50 years of watchmaking. You have quality materials. You have precision as well. Because keep in mind, what I'm comparing here is quartz movement and quartz is very precise when it comes to timekeeping you have quality full grain materials stainless steel construction Japanese movement so they're all quality pieces and you get the functionality keep in mind 
this also even comes with a date date. If I were to pick a date date model for a Rolex, I'd be easily spending three, four, five thousand dollars easily. And this you're getting 65 and you're getting that day date feature. So that's an extra feature you're getting still under the hundred dollar mark. So what am I trying to get here? What I'm basically trying to say is that you don't need to spend a lot to have a good timepiece. If you do your research, find a good brand, find a reputable brand one, one that has, you know, years of experience and that has a lot of people are reviews. You can buy yourself a good classic watch that's going to look good on you. And it's going to be functional you know it's gonna, not only going to look stylish on you but it's also going to function it's going to give you the accurate time and you're going to get that date date feature that you can just look at your wrist and know what day it is instead of having to pull out your iphone so basically to sum it up a quick comparison hands both of them have the the hour the minute and the sweeping seconds movement then we go on to the movement here we have japanese quartz japanese quartz as you know is the most accurate movement and basically requires no upkeep so you don't have to be having to get it serviced or anything like that you just have to replace the battery every three to five years maybe here you have the mechanical movement it's not automatic so that means you have to manually wind it so that's one thing you have to keep in mind and it also requires servicing as for features this one has a date date feature this one does not if i were to have picked a date date feature for a higher end timepiece I would probably have to pay a little bit more well not a little bit when it when it's usually with these higher end brands you have to pay quite a bit more casing they're both stainless steel casings the band like i mentioned the band for this one was originally steel this one you're getting full grain leather glass i'm not sure what this one is i tried to do the research i couldn't find it if, if i had to guess i mean i want to say it's sapphire crystal but if not then it's it's definitely plexiglass i tried to find it but again don't take my word for the glass because i like i tried to find it i couldn't find exactly what the material was for this one i know the 6480 model is plexiglass so it's not it's not sapphire crystal and finally a fancy logo you're paying about you know easily 10 times more just because of that logo and here you don't have that so i'm curious to see what you guys think would you spend a little bit more for a higher end piece or save yourself money and remain functional and still stylish that's basically the essence of what i'm trying to portray that it doesn't matter what brand you wear as long as it's good quality made it's functional it works for you and it looks good why spend 10 to 20 times more when you can spend 65 so that's basically it for this week's video, guys. I want to hear your comments down below. If you like the watch that you saw, I'll have them linked down below. Well, I can't link the Oyster because that is a vintage one that I mean, they don't sell it anymore. I'm sure you can, if you find, if you look around, you might be able to find one, but I'll link it down below in the description so you guys can easily click it and shop it. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, remember to hit up the like button. If you found it helpful and informative, remember to share this video so we can reach and teach more men. Thank you guys.